Hey guys, this is Table for Four. This is your boy Stefan, and welcome back to another episode on the podcast. Today we will be focusing on going back to school. Hey Adrian, can you tell us more about this episode? Of course I can. What's going on, listeners? On today's episode, we'll be talking about going back to school, going back down memory lane, talking about our experiences, how we all grew up differently, and seeing how the school experiences have changed over the years. Are you guys ready? Yes! yes. Cue the music. What's up? What's up? Check out the merch, yo. Show them up. Show them up. Check out the merch. Welcome back to season five. Season five. Season five. Season five. This is Stephanie. This is Andre. This is Adrian. And this is your boy, Stephanie. And this is Table Table Four Four, Family Family Conversation Conversation Podcast. Podcast. What is going on? We are excited. We're excited. We're excited. We're back with a new episode. And we're talking about bringing it back to old school. So in the beginning, you heard the boys talking about how we're going to be talking about our experiences, how we're going to compare, contrast, how things are going before and how things are going now. So Andres, can tell us a little bit about what's goal for our goal for this episode? Yes. Our goal for this episode is to compare when we went to school to when they're going to school. (laughs) So with this episode, some of the key takeaways we want to focus on is really having open family conversations. So what it really is, we want to encourage those conversations within our own family and with your family as well. You know, really focusing on social and mental challenges that really um, school life can bring. Um, We also want to talk about resource exploration. So meaning... Using the importance of seeking for help and looking for resources when you're really facing difficulties in school, then really you want to go to your guidance counselor, any of those types of resources. So that's another key takeaway from, you know, talking about difficulties with new schools. Also navigating school changes. You know, we want to highlight some of those changes that come with like going to a new school and how do you adapt to new environments and how it could be very dreadful in the beginning. But this is something that, this is this is all part of that. So, and another key takeaway we want to talk about is the personal impact of school changes. So, really by us having the opportunity to share, our, you know, our experiences and stories and how changing schools affects not only your life, but it's also your personal growth. Uh, Andres, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other key takeaways for this episode for today? Yeah. Uh, another one of the key takeaways is a historical perspective. We're going to reflect on the differences in school experiences between the past and present, especially when school environments used to be more dangerous. Facts. Next, we're going to be talking about honesty uh, story exchange. We're going to try to uh, talk about creating a safe space for family. We're going <laughs> to honesty story exchange. We're going to be talking about creating a safe space for family members to honestly exchange stories and experiences related to school and fostering empathy and understanding and also the evolution of bullying, where we're going to discuss the nature of how bullying has changed over time and the importance of addressing this issue in today's modern society. So a quick story when focusing on bullying. So... Our first interaction um, dates back I have to. A question. You have a question? What's up? What you mean by dangerous? Oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna get. We're that. we're gonna get. We're gonna get to that. Don't you worry about that, young one. So, a quick story. We wanted to uh, kind of highlight on an interaction we had. So, a couple of few weeks back, we were having breakfast at our you know favorite place, and we were trying to just sit down, relax, and we were like kind of brainstorming for this episode. Yeah. And it just so happens that we were in the right place at the right time. So our interaction really began when a group of kids were coming in. Um, I believe they were um, allowed out for lunch and whatever. So we're sitting there and a whole bunch of kids coming in and start to get crowded because it was empty. Four boys come in and they place their bags on a bench and there's like a little space for them. And a whole bunch of other kids start to come in. So there's a group of girls that come in. They come in and they see that there's no tables, but the one that was available was the one where the boys put their book bags on. So one of the girls, I'm going to call her the uh, headmaster, the, the, what do you want to call them? The The ringleader. The ringleader. Is that what we want to call them? Yeah. So she comes in, makes a decision, looks around and asks, oh, whose book bags are these? 
And she made the, the I get the conscious choice to be like, well, they're not here. We're going to remove that because yep. we want to so sit they here. The kids on, they threw the bags on the floor. So she picked up the bags and threw them on the floor. So. Now, <laughs> so then she, she looks at the girls and she says out loud. This is why they make. This is why they make movies of of girls like this. Of these characters, <laughs> these characters like wow. Mean Girls, you know. I so then just... the kid comes back, and then uh, he's looking around. He's looking around, like, and he, why and is he my sees bag his bag on, on the, on the floor. floor. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he goes, "Did you throw my bag on the floor?" And she said, "No, it was it was already there. It was already there." She's like, "This table was empty." And he's like, "No, our bags was on the on the on the on the table on the table, yeah, on the bench." And then she said, "No, we we took it." And then he just really goes, "Who the f do you think you are?" Huh? And then everybody <laughs> around him started laughing at him. That was the thing that got me upset. See, these are the examples of bullying that I, I'm not with it. But again, I can't, I, can't, I can't say anything. I can't step in because, you know, I'm the it's adult. That's how life is. Listen, yeah, yeah. If, I was, if I was that kid. It would have went down real no, different. <laughs> the minute, the minute uh, those girls walk away from the table. Their bags would have been on the floor. Oh, it would have been. Hands it would down. have. It would have been a different it's exchange about to go down. down. But these are the things that. Um, this is this is life when it comes to school, and this is why we're gonna touch upon um, evolution of bullying. So we want to start with something that wanted to really start this episode was really change is good, right? We want to say change is good in some perspective, right? So. Andres and I, we really sat down and we were talking about what are we going to do for the following school year? We're thinking of changes, you know, what, what should we do? So we started to see the kids' mental health being really, really affected. They were, mm -hmm. I mean, they were riddled by stress, anxiety. And it, for us, it was like, it's time for a change. The whole time we were trying to see, should we transfer them into another school? Should we go charter? Should we go public? Should we go to somewhere else? And um, the 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 catalyst for that is that the kids were on the the verge of failing again. So we were, were like, they're no. getting too old to be repeating the same grade again, and it's just like it's time to. It's, it, we agreed it was time to go. So yeah. this is our story about the struggles changing schools. Our story, you know, struggles really after COVID because this is how really the. I want to say the pattern really started to develop. And I know you mentioned that the philosophy of the school changed. If you could tell me a little bit like about your thoughts about that. Yeah. Well, I felt like the, the school let the kids down. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. You know, they've been in, in the, they were in that school since kindergarten. And uh, we felt like in the beginning, since he was a, he wasn't a problematic child. He just needed more discipline. Yeah. And we felt like, at that age, at kindergarten, public school wasn't going to give him that. Right. So that's why we decided to go with charter school to give them structure, more discipline, and it kind of worked. Yeah, yeah. Up to this point. Up this point. into a certain point. Yeah. So, but really it was just seeing the, the breakdown and seeing how they were not enjoying themselves going to school because school should be an enjoyful... No, it's not. Well, I mean, at some <laughs> For point... For some people it is. No, but... No, 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 no. You can't say it like that because it has to have some sort of form of joy when going to school. School, it comes involved with work, but you shouldn't want to not never go to school. Right. You can't because you're going to be spending the majority of your time going to school. If you're not working, your butt is in school. You have to like school to some degree. Right. And if you're not happy at where you're at, then there's no reason for you to be there. So that was really, you know, this is the beginning of our conversation. And, you know, it, it really was the catalyst again for us wanting to make the change not for not only for us but for them as well so some of the things i wanted to talk about really quickly is about what are some good examples to ask your kids when they're going to a new school so who wants to start with the first question who would like to start with the first question first question i will start with is how did you feel about starting at a new school stefan you can go first and then adrian you can go next It's really hard. Okay. I'm going to need more than that, kid. <laughs> I'm going to need more than that. So let's take it from the point where you were feeling like, was this something that needed to happen? Because it was a, it was a decision between your, your dad and I about you changing schools. But what were your thoughts about that? What was your whole thought, like your whole process? I want 
back. You wanted to go back? Okay. Because even though like they were like really disciplinary, uh, there were a lot of they're like really cool like trips and stuff. It was like game truck that like that came. I was like, I don't know if I go, but then I ended up going anyway. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. I kind of want to go back. You know, even if the trips were boring, like that time we went like hiking, it was still kind. Of, it was still fun. So for you, it's okay. So your your relationship with the school was different because you didn't want to leave. You didn't want you. But my thing is, it's like we saw a change in you. Like you were not happy. Like you were not happy. Like you felt stressed all the time. You guys were saying you constantly were doing tests. You're constantly doing this. You were never happy. Like so, if you're telling us now, it's hard. But why was it hard? Why was it hard? I feel like the math is like a little bit complicated for me. Mm-hmm. But like everything else was like a little bit easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was doing good in like history, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to do good in science. Right. I was doing good, but then like the grade went down for some reason. Okay. But let's, let's go back. I'm going to ask the question one more time. How did you feel starting at a new school? I need, I need your very honest answer. Not the answer you think I want to hear. I want to hear a, a, an honest answer. Um, it was hard going to a new school because I never met any of the teachers or the people yet. Because so, you've been comfortable at the same school for all this time or you've been comfortable with the same amount of people, right? With the, the same, same school. With the same people. Because I had friends since like third grade, I think. Mm-hmm. I think. And there's like all these new people. So I'm not used to them. Mm-hmm. So it was like really difficult for me. Mm-hmm. So how did you feel on the last day of school at your old school? Mm, I didn't want to leave because mm-hmm. I had like all these friends and stuff, and I had these teachers and they really. And then sometimes if they're mean, they were still really nice. <laughs> okay, but it was to my understanding the way that your father described to me that you were crying that day. Okay, can you, you, ex- can, you can you explain to me how? Can you explain to me why? Because I don't think I was like, going to see my friends again unless it's like my birthday or something. Mm-hmm. So you were super sad because it was your friends. Not the relationship with the school, not the schoolwork, nothing like that. But you were really sad because you were going to miss your friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Adrian, can you answer? How did oh. you feel about starting at a new school? Well, it was definitely interesting to say the least. I do have some stories to tell, but we'll get into that later, right? Right. Um, I guess you would say it's, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a lot different, very different. Um, they're not as um, like disciplined as they were back in our old school, you know? Uh, a it's lot. way back. It's very, very. <laughs> and like, if I was to compare my old school to the new school, my old school is incredibly more tame than this school. As in, like, for the kids. The kids in my, in my school right now are just... Oh. Wild. Very. <laughs> but um, I would say the work isn't um, as difficult as I would say as our old school. Our old school had a lot more subjects to go through and a lot... Not more subjects, but a lot more difficult work to go through as, like, a seventh grader because we were doing 10th grade tests and ninth grade work at such, like... A young age, you should be doing that. You should be doing ninth and tenth grade work at um like maybe like fifteen, sixteen, not like twelve, thirteen. Mm-hmm. And then for some of the kids that passed the old school, I was so impressed. I was like, "How do you go through all of that? Still pass, mm-hmm. you know?" But it was kind of sad to leave the old school. You know, you well, kind of you kind of growing up with all the people you know in there. Yeah, so you made them since kindergarten. You know, you guys kind of grew up together, right? Like, changes have to be made. And to be honest, I do miss my old school, but not as much as Stefan, because not really. I just felt like I needed a change, you know? Like, being in a new environment kind of helped me. Because I'm doing better in school. New, like, the, I think my new friends and all that stuff has kind of helped me, you know, transition, realize, transition realize and mature a lot more, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's great. What are your thoughts of, of, of going to a new school? It's Cause, terrible. Because they're not the only ones that <laughs> are going to a new school. She's going to a new college. It's terrible. 
I'm I'm the oldest in the class. I'm there. I'm walking in with a mortgage, two kids, a husband, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> like I'm like, and I and like I look old. Like I I don't feel old. I just look old. There than a lot of these kids. <laughs> Yeah. So now it's now it's in a in a sense that I feel I feel like a sore thumb because not only do I look older than all these students I look as just as old as the professors I look like I They're should be teaching your age, you're probably they are no you don't you don't no way yeah did, did, did you tell me uh one of the, the other day that uh somebody asked you for your Instagram yeah <laughs> and then uh, they went to her page and they were like oh my god you're a mother oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> So embarrassed. Like, you're a mom. Oh my god, you're a mom. But here's the thing, though. Like starting <laughs> at a new school, I knew it was going to be difficult because I knew that transition from going from from where I was to to now. The money is a big change, but the great thing was I did get a full scholarship. Um, for the time that I'm going to be at the school at the college. Yeah, three year scholarship. Three year scholarship, and then um, that was unexpected. That was totally unexpected. Was this? Whew, thank, yeah. thank the Lord. But you know. The the workload is different because the degree that I'm still going for, they have so many different requirements and I have to take more classes. I have to take more classes and I have to take more classes. So that's where I'm at. So starting a new school is exciting, but it's very dreadful. I'm the oldest in, so, in the classroom. Well, what's your major now right now? My, You're in the health services? I am, I am in the health and wellness. Health and wellness? Uh, health and wellness degree program with then, the intent then, then, of going into nursing BSN, which is a bachelor's of science. And then I will be transferring into a psychology minor, which will kind of compensate. I will be double majoring because it, the end goal is to be a nurse practitioner. So, yeah. <laughs> so she's double majoring, <laughs> minoring in psychology? Psychology, yes. Next semester, starting uh, next semester? Yeah. And majoring in nursing BSN. And BSN. Uh, sounds like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she still had to do the two years anyway. I still had to, to, get, to, the bachelor's. to get the bachelor's. So, you know. So this is kind of helped. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Who wants to ask the next question? Number one, since you guys have been in school for two weeks now, do you guys like your teachers okay. compared to your old teachers? That's a good question. That's a great question. Um, who's going first? Yes. And I've been asking you this every day. So what have you been telling me? Inquiring minds want to know. Be honest. How are do these teachers compared to your old school? And you said way better than than your old school. And you said, and then you said, can you let him answer? I'm trying to trigger his memory. Okay, go ahead. There we go. There we go. They care more. Mm. They care a lot more than I thought I would, and than that they would. Because mm-hmm. I feel like back in my old school, they didn't really care about the kids as much they only really cared about results looking like a good school and having results. good grades and then they oh they were always upset when we then they said oh my god we were not we were wearing number one in the new york state test something i guess we're gonna have to give you more work now so you guys can stay on top <laughs> okay brenda <laughs> like, oh my god like i hope that's nobody's real name bro it's not don't okay worry. Good. um <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely better. I had this conversation with one of my math teachers walking out. It's like we were walking at the same time. Um, I told him like, "What do you guys feel about like tests and kids?" And I say, and I said, and I, yeah, and he told me like, "We care more about the kids than we care more about the tests." And that like, um, it resonated with you. That like really. I don't know. I don't know. That don't sound too good either. <laughs> we don't care about the tests. Uh. You gotta no, care about that was the not test. What I, why, why, no, I meant like they care more about the kids than the tests because it makes it has to like if your kids are re- doing really well mentally and having like a great time at school, then that probably means they're gonna have more success as a passing. You know, <laughs> it's like having grit, perseverance, <laughs> and determination. <laughs> thank you, thank you for answering that, well, Stefan. Well, well, yeah, you, Stefan. They're really loud. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by loud? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, take your hand off your face, please. When the class keeps talking, they like they like scream at the, at everyone. Like stop it! So they too loud for you. So they're like quiet, quiet. Okay, all right. <laughs> listen to the other one. Cooper, like, Cooper so quiet. is it? So it's a little too loud for you, a little too noisy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. sometimes, like. When my humanities teacher, um, 
He says, thank you in one and three, thank you in two, where they have to be quiet and then thank you in one. Mm-hmm. And when there are people not quiet at one, like he literally yells. So can you expand a little bit more about, so you think that your teachers are just loud? Do you think that in mentioning what your brothers say, that do you feel like they care for you more? Do you feel like there's a different relationship with the teachers that you had in your old school and your new school? Um, I don't really know. Because you really, because it's only been like two weeks, yeah, right? So, so compare, you really yeah. can't really compare right now. But do you have a feeling like you like them so far? You know, like they're okay, they're cool. I don't know. Still don't know. Okay. Still, we're still, still, still out, testing the water. We're still, still vibe, out in the still, jury, right? The you're vibe checking right now. I see you. The jury is that what the kids like, say nowadays? Vibe checking. Yeah. Yo, why are you? Sneaking? You definitely did not pass the vibe check. <laughs> <laughs> You can't say shit like that, Mickey. You know, you know, vibe checking. Yeah, no, I'm too old to say that. Yeah, you're too old for that shit. Trump, you, know? you can, you can still, you, you can still say it. It's just, you're not didn't pass the vibe check. Yo, just <laughs> solid straight face, bro. But um, I think I think the question is um, when you you really are not familiar, you're not sure because you're not you haven't been there long enough, right? But so far, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel like you? Um, can trust the teachers. You feel like you know. I, besides them being loud, I'm loud. You know, and you still like me. So. That's because you're his mother. <laughs> you're different from the teachers in school. Okay. Because I'm different because I'm your mom, or I'm just different in general. Because you're my mom. Okay. So you're used to it being me being loud, but you don't like being loud in in the school environment. No. No, it bothers you a little bit. Okay, and Isn't that's yelled at your other school. <clears throat> Yeah, but they weren't as loud though. What? You gotta remember that the teachers that you guys had. So the, no, the, the teachers you guys you guys had your other school. They came straight from college, so they're like young kids. They're not gonna yell at you right now because they're probably intimidated and scared and it's the first time teaching. I don't know about all that, but no, it's true. Teachers come with different um, flavors. Yeah. Uh, you took the words out of different my mouth, but different backgrounds and different experiences. So you're gonna have more experienced teachers that are going to, you know. Come with a different approach. Why are you huffing and puffing? Some are more passionate, and some, some are more... yeah. Some are willing to work more closely with with you know some, some students. More, some care more. Some care more. Some don't care. So it's just like it's a mixture of the the type of teacher you get in your environment. What do you think about your teachers now that you're at this new school, at your private college, compared to the school you went to before? You want you want the honest answer? Yeah, give it, give, yeah, give the honest answer. Hi. <laughs> okay, so. My chemistry teacher, he does not move a muscle, okay? My man will not get up from the seat, and we're in the classroom for two and a half hours. He will literally turn around like this, right on the board, and then turn right to the front. He is old as the first day, okay? <laughs> that, that's, that's my only comment. My other teachers, I really feel like um, in comparison to my others... It's a whole completely different experience. Bad or good? Bad. You feel like you're paying all this money. Absolutely. For, for that experience? Absolutely, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. I should want to feel like I want to talk to you and I feel like I don't want to talk to you. Damn. That's where I'm at. But like I said, it's still early. It's only been two weeks. It could change. It could change. And I think it because she, they're still trying to figure out who are the students? There's a lot of us in there. So if they don't know my name, I say, fine. The better, the less you know about my name, the better it is for me. Yeah. As long as long, my grades speak for themselves. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. That's where I'm at. So now, do you feel you're going to be more successful at this new school? At your age right now? Because remember, you're in a classroom full of high school, freshly... Youngins. Freshly graduated high school meet. Yeah. <laughs> do I feel... <laughs> do I feel like I would be more successful? Yeah. This time around? Yeah. I thought I was successful the first time around. Thought so too. I, I, that's what I thought. But I think, I think the, the, the mindset has changed because I was trying to do too much. I was trying to work too many days. I was trying to do all these different things and I wasn't really focusing and doing what I needed to do. And that was really, that's, you know, uh, my fault, but a so lot of it. Not enough hours in a the day. There's not enough hours in a day to do the things that I want to do. <clears throat> So I'm just trying to look at things differently. I'm trying to approach school differently. But the problem, not the problem, but the concern now is that I have to maintain full time the entire time because I'm on scholarship. 
Mm. I had a little bit more flexibility because I was on part-time before in my school. Even though I was still part-time, it was still full-time because I was still doing clinicals. I was still doing papers. I was still doing research. So for me, it's just like, I don't know how I wasn't successful the first time. And it's really, it all boils down to is exams. My anxiety, exams, done. It's not that I didn't know the material. It's not that I didn't know how to, to, to work out in the field. It wasn't it. My test reflected how my anxiety got the best of me, point blank. But you knew the stuff. I thought I knew it. No, you know it. You but know, I know it, you but know. I, then I don't. So... My goal here now is to get the proper tutoring. No, no, but I'm going to get proper tutoring. I'm going to get, because there's so much resources at my school. That's the complete difference because there's resources, everything. So I'm going to go and get my resources now. Help me with testing anxiety. Help me with studying. Help me with really organizing myself because I didn't look for that. In my other school, I didn't because I thought. You didn't ah, need to. Yeah, you, you, no, but the thing you is, were the top I, of your class. I, I thought I, I got it. I got it. Um, you were the top of your class. I, oh, you I was in the top of the class, but I ain't shit if my, <laughs> if my, my, if my testing anxiety gets yeah, in the way. Yeah. So, I think the goal is to really um, focus on using the resources that at were the school provides at the school provides. One hundred percent. Ask me the question right, now. So I'm gonna ask you now, not to the kids now. Do you think you're gonna be more successful at this new school? Yes. Very, very much so. Listen, I, very I, I was much. part of your curriculum presentation yesterday, and there's no way you should not be in honors compared to your old school. I don't want to be in honors, but thanks for <laughs> thanks for asking anyway. Um, your dad I sounds think, very confident in you. I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident in you. too. Yeah, I'm confident. In both I'm confident. of you. It's not. I don't want. I don't want to like jinx myself. But it's still I too early to tell. It's still too early. I don't want to say it's. Easy, um, but I did see a sneak peek of one of the less uh, the topics that are going to be discussed later in the year, and I saw like pyramid of triangle or period pyramid of of trapezoid. Okay, I don't know what's coming for me, but I don't think the subjects are hard to me right now. I feel like if I just like focus on my work, I would just get everything done. You know, facts. I think that I'm going to do the same thing. Like, like, I'm not saying I want to be like a a lifeless worker that just works all day and doesn't want to What is a lifeless, lifeless worker? worker? What is that? <laughs> that means oh, you're like, stuck. Not like, uh, not like stuck <laughs> as in like just doing the work and not having any interaction and just being. Oh, so you get, you're there to get the job done. Facts. But also to interact and have fun. Because, you know, I don't think anyone is not always about fun, bro. I'm not okay, saying it's done. about all but, about right. fun. But like, I'm just saying having, having more interactions could make your school experience more better depending on how you talk to other people. Sure. Yeah. What about you, Stefan? What about you, Stefan? Do you feel like you're going to be more successful? Um, Not if these teachers are allowed, right? Probably. <laughs> there you have it, folks. There you go. There you the go. The man of no words. No, not no words. Little, Little words. words. So if you had to compare your success, right, from the old school to now, your father's asking, do you feel that you will be more successful in this school with the way that the school is set up? The work is set up. Do you think that you'll be better at it? Um, yeah. Can you extend a little bit more, please? This is like, these are the questions. Like, I feel like a lot of parents have the same issue. We ask you a question. We get these one worded answers. Like, why? Expand on it, bro. Expand. Tell me more. I get, What's the Go card the I got to give you? Dig deeper, card. Dig deeper. Like, dig Go deeper, bro. Tea. Go ahead. Uh, I think the work is a little bit more complicated, but it's still easier. Really? 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But it looks complicated. It looks complicated, right? But if you practice it and you do your work, then I think you should be more than fine. More than fine. So how about we share our thoughts about school in general? Okay. So Andres, why don't you talk about your thoughts yes. about school? My thoughts now, it's, uh, I call it new school, old school. Mm-hmm. And they're going to the middle school that I went to growing up. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer, it's still public school, but now you have three different schools in there. In one. In one, three different magnet schools in one. And when I showed up the first day, compared to when I went to school, totally different. It's the same building, the same look, same historical you know, landmark that's there. Mm -hmm. But then all these kids are on their phones. They got Jordans on. They got the headphones on. They got their beats on. 
as they're walking out to school with their phones in their hand. I'm like, this will not fly when, when we were in school. Mm. Mm-hmm. Could you expand more on that? Dig deeper. Because when we were in school, we didn't have technology, you know? Okay. So, All and, right. And, when and you say did, that, oh, wait, was, wait, wait, everything wait. was confiscated. You weren't allowed to bring a Game Boy, which is the the first original Switch. It was a Game Boy. You, <laughs> the original t- Switch. <laughs> Tiger handhelds. You weren't allowed to bring anything to school. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Not even a watch. And then now, like, everything is like no holds barred. You guys are allowed to bring your phone, but now you have your pouches to lock your phones. In what the, are these pouches called? They're called yonder, the yonder pouch. Yonder, yonder. Yeah. Without an e, just yonder. <laughs> what, what, seven? What is it? What is it? Can you explain what that is? Um, you just put your phone in it, and there's like a little button at the end. You just push it, and then it's locked the, 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 the pouch. So you don't have access to the phone the whole time. No. Yeah, you, you, they have a special device where you tap. It's almost like one of those magnets they use for. It's just a magnet that you and you push the button. Uh huh. You put the magnetic like little like. Okay, so the partic- Okay, so you ha- you're allowed to bring the electronics to the to the school, but then you have to ha- put it away for safekeeping. That's yeah, the purpose you, you of the You walk around with it your whole time with you. Okay, but it, you don't like, have like, you don't have access. It's to like it. when you go to like a, a department store and they have like the magnetic tag, the security tag, oh, and they have to tap it to a magnet to release it. Oh, didn't know that. So it's like that. They have to tap it to the to gotcha. the, the magnet to open it up. But okay, at but the end of school, at the, next and, the exit, then they, right? and then they get to release it at the end of the school year. I mean, at the, at end, the, of the, school, the end of the day, end of the day, school year. No, I no, school day. Lock my phone for the rest of the school year. <laughs> I am going to rip open the pouch. You can just bust it open. Bust it wide open. So, yeah. No, but tell well, us, tell us more about your thoughts, though. Right. So, so I'm looking at all these kids, and I'm like. This, this is like in the first day of school there was a fight already like, so that, that's always the, the old school the constant the yeah. bullying yeah yeah and these things started bringing back all the memories from the 90s mm-hmm. so now I started thinking about how is it different from when we went to school right right now and I don't think we're far off it's just size all the gadgets I think everything is probably still the same mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they've had Chromebook then MacBooks my right, old school then, never I had said, MacBooks. I'm looking at all these kids. These kids are like punks. <laughs> you know? Okay. And then, <laughs> and then, Wait a minute. And, and then I told you that these kids now, they wouldn't survive the 90s. The school, oh, the, uh, the school education. 100%. Because we had hardcore teachers. <laughs> hardcore teachers. So the ones that are yelling at you, it's not that serious. It's baby talk. Yeah. It's yeah. like Take baby stuff. Child's so. play. Child's play. So, so... <laughs> Okay, so when we're mentioning before in the beginning of the episode, we're talking about, you know, the evolution of bullying and how each of our perspectives are different when we went to school. So I want I want you to tell us a little bit about that, though. Like, how, how was it so different? You're saying now we're focusing on technology. All right, so technology is one. What's another thing? What's another thing that you wanted to compare about in terms of like how, how you're saying that they couldn't survive in the 90s. But how? Why? These kids are, uh, back then, you, uh, when I went to school, mm-hmm. it was just nothing but bullies. Oh, so were you one? I wasn't a bully. I got bullied. <laughs> okay. You know, people tease me all the time. So you, know, you got they, picked on when I you got were picked a kid. On. I got picked on. Okay. People make fun of my weight all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, they used to call me Peter from the Cosby show. They... <laughs> Oh my God, you look exactly <laughs> like him. When you edit, I want you to pick up a picture and a do a picture face-to-face comparison. <laughs> Put it right there. Oh my goodness. Okay. You know, people used to make fun of my weight, just make fun of my clothes, sneakers, you name it, you know? But that's nothing new. I feel like the kids in the 90s were more ruthless. Oh, okay. So you're yeah. saying ruthless is like yeah. the level of ruthless. So you yeah. don't think people, the, you there don't think these kids, you don't think these badass kids are not ruthless now? Nah. You don't think so? No. Well, they probably have see, no okay. care. See, my see my take on that was like I really felt like um <laughs> see, my take on it was like I really thought all right, let's take it from the beginning. Like my thoughts when you when we when you and I had this conversation, I said to myself, I'm like, yo, I really don't think that we really fully prepared them for no. what it is to be in public school because right. how we grew up differently. So like for me, I grew up in Brooklyn, right? So um, gang um, fang, like the fights, gangs, the bullying, thing. that was not uncommon. Like I witnessed it all the time. And the thing is, I did my best to mind my business and focus on my, my studies. That's what I was doing. So my, my thing was like, I was trying to stay out of trouble and my, my business, right? So 
I guess my fear with the the evolution of bullying is that we fear for our kids because now they're coming from a very different environment, right? They're coming from a charter school and they're going into a public school. So now we we on the flip side now, right? Merging. Merging, right? So I did, like I said, I didn't think we properly prepared them, you know, for, (laughs) for our kids. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but you know, when you say punks, I'm saying, I, I think I defined it differently. Like you're saying punks, like punks, like what? Like how, how, what's your definition of punk? Cause then, everybody's a punk to me. And all these kids now, like they. No, but I need you to define punk though. It looks so you, soft. Oh, all right. So when you say, when you say punk, you're saying like these people. They look soft. They look soft. They look all right. soft. All right. Like want to act hard, want to be hard, you know, but. But they're not. They're not. All right. So when, so when you. You have a so, few stragglers here that you see that, all right, these probably, these guys could cut it, but. <laughs> <laughs> But other than that, like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then... But you know what? That, that means the parents are doing a good job from sheltering the right. bad, you know? Right. Good. But 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 do you think that we sheltered them too much? I think we sheltered them too much. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh-huh. Why, what What's the comment? I need your thoughts on that. I don't think you guys have sheltered us too much. I feel like we have matured enough to, like, go past that and just, like, ignore. Like, not, not act, ignore. Not act all ghetto and stuff. I don't what do you mean? I get on ratchet. Don't act. Oh, ratchet. Ratchet. Don't, ratchet. ratchet. Don't don't act. Don't act with ratchetness, guys. Okay, so I mm-hmm. now you know, it, and you know what? And and I'm not apologizing for it. You know, for sheltering. For no, not, sheltering. Not for sheltering. For for showing them a good a good life. For, for giving them a good life. They're not out. Oh, I'm, they're not out there in the streets. You know, not seeing the bad. You, you guys are not seeing. Well, what, what the ghetto is. You know, like no, guys, no, no. Okay. I think I, I guess to, I'm rephrasing it wrong. I think you gotta take a step back. I think when when we're saying when we we've sheltered them, sheltered them not from the bad stuff because there's still bad things that happen in life. It's not that we're it's just sheltering. That we're not around. We're, we're constantly traveling. We're constantly going someplace. We're never here enough to see what goes on in our neighborhood. You here right now? No, yeah, no, no. I, th- I think I think you're going in the wrong direction. I think what you're trying to say is that we haven't been exposed to the bad stuff enough to understand what's happening. There Bingo. You Bingo. Bingo. You said it correctly. Major. Bingo. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think our fear is that by us not exposing to you about um what it is to really like grow up in Queens and grow up in Brooklyn around gangs and around, you know, different trouble like that, that it's scary for us to like, oh my God, did we really prepare them? But then you ask them as like you would you would you literally extracted them like, yo, don't let nobody punk you. So I'm like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what is your definition of a punk? Like somebody that's don't weak. let them bully you. Don't let them, you know. But we teach, we taught these kids to speak their minds. To don't let nobody shove them or push them. And, I, and, and it's a good and a bad. It's a good and a bad. Yeah, and hundred percent. And, and you know, like like Adrian told me the, the first week, they're making fun of his the way he talks mm-hmm. because he doesn't talk hood enough. Oh he doesn't God. talk ghetto enough. Oh my God. Or slang enough. Right. <laughs> because you grew up talking proper English, proper language. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, Sorry, what do you mean by like, proper English? Yeah. Everyone speaks English in the school. I don't know what you're talking about. You okay, not me, okay. Not slang. Me. You know, we haven't exposed you to what happens a lot in when, the neighborhood. When we grew up. When we grew up. When we grew up, we didn't right. expose you because we did that on purpose. Yeah. Because we, we didn't want you in that environment. We didn't like, want us to see the bad mm-hmm. part of the world, but instead see the mediocre part of the world. Mediocre, he says. No, we showed you a... Good life, you know, like a good we environment. Can, we, I never we said it wasn't a good life. We still try to continue to give you a good we life. We still try to continue to give you a good and you environment. Got, you Ooh. guys have done an absolutely amazing job. Of well, doing I thank that. you, thank you. Thank I take you, credit for you. that. Take credit for that. I don't that. think I've ever seen something dangerous at all. You guys have done a, a very incredibly great job on just not exposing us to that for a really long time. Yeah, but we 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 did that on purpose, though. We we did that you know purposefully. Like, so we're at an age where you know. You know, Theo and I we used to be outside the streets all the time. You know, we used right. to be outside hanging out, running the streets, bro. We weren't running the streets, but we were, but we were hanging out with the wrong like, crowd. You know, hanging out with friends. We, we did a lot of that was like unnecessary we, we did, stuff. We did unnecessary stuff, but you know, like to survive. You live and learn. That was yeah, like we live and learn. Over, and I don't want that for 25 you. Twenty five years ago, things have changed a lot, right? And I think that's the point what your right. dad is and saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Like the kids that you're going to school with now, are they're soft, in that environment. No, they're, they're in that environment now. They live and breathe that whole. You know. Struggle every day. The mindset. The mindset. Mm-hmm. You guys have a different mindset, which is you have to have a good mindset. So everyone else has a negative mindset. So no. I get. I guess. I guess what your dad Street is. Mentality. I think your dad is hinting to the point that because 
we expect a lot from you because we put you in a different school. Now the standards have been a little bit, they've been changed a little bit. So we have a special guest here. We have Rolando in the building. Hello. Focus, focus in. Hello, so, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Mr. He just happened to show up. He just happened to show <laughs> up. I was in the neighborhood. There you go. You get a big old knock on the door. But we're talking about a special episode about going back to school. Tell us about your experience um, going back to school. Like, how is it different from like when you went to like when the kids going now? So how far back do we want to talk? Like, we're going to talk Man. college. We want to talk, talk uh, middle, school, middle school, like middle school. So middle school. Yeah. So it, I, that's what I was asking you mm-hmm. about last time. It, it, uh, like how... How is that school? Because when we were there, it was, it was like a, I don't want to say boot camp, but it was, <laughs> it was like a, an Survivor's asylum, kid. like an asylum that's that's run loose. Yeah. Oh my god! Um, I didn't even know that that was the proper <laughs> word for that. Run loose. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad when I was there. There's a lot of gangs, not a lot, but there was a couple of gangs from the neighborhood. Um, a lot of fights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, education was good. Mm-hmm. If, if you paid attention and you actually went to class, yeah, they had some really good teachers that actually cared. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a rough time. If you hung out with the wrong people, it definitely uh, influenced your grades. And oh man, yeah. And you know it's so crazy because our our fear for them is like from going from one school to a, uh, a different one. Like we were like, did we not prepare them enough? Did we like not sh- did we shelter them too much to kind of not have them exposed to that? But then like. <laughs> You, you know, on just when I were talking about, like, we did that on purpose. Like, we didn't yeah. want to do yeah, that. Yeah, because, like, also, you know, we all went to public school. Yeah. So we, we all knew, did. You knew the, the outcome. And we yeah. knew. We didn't want that for them. And and if you want to, if you have the the chance and the, uh, I don't want to say luxury, but if you're able to put them in a better school, then why wouldn't you want that why for wouldn't your you want that? children? Right. Yeah. Of right. course. And we did that. And I guess it kind of, it paid off in the end because... They, I mean, they're well above their reading levels. They're well above where they need to be right now. But it's, I find it so difficult because for us to kind of compare how we're going to school back then, because like, again, like you mentioned, like going gangs, like it was never unusual to have a fight in the middle of the hallway. Yeah. Lunchtime yeah. was where things went down. After yeah. school, it went down. Yeah. Like there was never a time that I would go and there would not be a fight in school. Mm-hmm. There would be times that like I've seen kids getting chased down the street. Oh yeah. Right. I've that seen that. That's, that still that happens. Was a, a daily occurrence. On a daily occurrence. So yeah. that like, that was my fear for them going to school like that. I'm like, oh my God, we didn't prepare them for this. They're going to see all this. Then I'll be like, oh my God. Is that we're, still we're happening? Terrible. Yeah. That stuff still I happening? Mean, what, people being chased? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. it still happens. The first day of school, somebody got chased somebody from McDonald's. Got chased. <laughs> <laughs> so things haven't changed. Things haven't changed that much. But he said that he saw he witnessed a fight in his school. Yeah, his first, first week fight, of school. First fight in school. Oh, first fight. He's first never seen fight. a fight. Oh, okay, yeah. But he saw it through the glass, like through the door. He's like, <laughs> peeking, oh, snap, this kid get beat up. <laughs> he said but, he saw blood. <laughs> but, and that, but that's the thing, like, it's so different to see how the generations are. And now your brother was talking about, it was like with technology was another thing. Like we, you yeah. couldn't have no Game Boys. You couldn't have no phone. Like we didn't have no cell phones or nothing like that. So, oh, you know what we had? Tamagotchis. Tamagotchis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I might got stolen. Because <laughs> you can't get nothing, no, bro. I got robbed. I got robbed. Oh that's, my God. <laughs> I got robbed. So, I mean, pretty much that sums up like, well, not sums up, but those you know, you got robbed, fights. Yeah. That pretty much like gives you an idea of what we had to go through. Yeah. But you know what? I also, it, it helped, it helped toughen us. A hundred percent. You know, 100%. and it, I, like, it's one thing that I have, even when we travel, I have this like, the street mentality, uh, this, yeah, survival is this, this uh, alert, alert, you know, yeah. like Alertness. I'm always alert. Uh, I, I could see th- bad things brewing mm-hmm. and I credit my public school. Absolutely. Uh, um, Surrounding the, you. <laughs> My, my public school attendance uh, to, because of that you know I'm, I could spot like potential threats of yeah, yeah, hazard, yeah, yeah things happening oh you know what let, let me go stand over here it can or, give you or, an like, I see this guy too arguing like these two guys arguing I'm gonna go you're reading else. body language you're yeah. looking at the environment you're thinking, like, I've, like I've seen it I'm the like craziest thing I ever saw was in high school was two pregnant women fighting what? Yeah, and and it wasn't like it was probably up. the most 
I seen a lot of fights growing up, and probably, you know I've been part of a lot of fights growing up as a teenager. Look at, look at these openly admitting to that. But <laughs> it was probably the most violent fight that I've ever witnessed. Really? Yeah, they had locks. They put locks on their uh, on their fist, hands. and they 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 went in for damage. Like oh. two pregnant women, two pregnant girls. They weren't even eighteen yet, and they were dismantling pound each for other. Pound. Yeah, so that's the stuff that we experienced, yeah. and it could happen at any time. Um, I guess. You know, coming from, I'm not a parent, but I wouldn't want to put my kids through that. I don't want them to witness that. Did it help me become who I am? I, I think so. It mm-hmm. toughened me up. It made me alert. But I don't think, if, I don't think that's a benefit, you know, in, I, I in, in most aspects it. of your life. Yeah, I see how, I, I, I could see how you would say that you don't want that as a benefit. But I think that was the thing that we were like most concerned about because the evolution of bullying has really definitely changed. Oh, yeah. So now bullying cyber now it's cyber texting, right. you know, things like that. So that that was like really a concern for us. But social media, now social media is always. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's amplified. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even like the first day of week of school, you guys don't have Snapchat? Do you guys don't have Instagram? We don't have Instagram. Like, no, I'm like, no. I was like, and I said, like, again, nah, that's bro, us. I'm actually learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually learning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know if you're not with the trends it's like you you know you're left to the sun i'm like oh this kid he's like what is this guy over here you know so that 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 to me was just like that was really like what we were worried about but having them not being exposed to it i again we did it purposefully because we didn't want them to be exposed to that mm-hmm. you know but I, I think it's one of the things that drove me to to get out of this like uh area i was growing up seeing how the school systems were um you know the it, the school system had the resources as far as like the teachers and the after school programs is just that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to keep you away from the bad influences. You're absolutely correct. So for me growing up, it's one of the things that I always tell myself, like if I have kids, I don't want them to go to this school, you know, same. Right. I'm sure it's way better now, but oh, they have but, a lot of yeah. programs. Oh now. yeah. They have a lot of programs, but it was tough. It was tough at times. And if you were, I don't want to say um, weak or anything, but I want to say if you were different, you, you stuck out like a sword though. Yeah, you you definitely got picked on. And That's what's happening now. That's yeah. what's happening to him now. They, they talk, they don't talk, you know, like hood, all hood and ghetto. Yeah. Like they see the difference. I'm like, just trying to still figure out like what is the like when you they say don't that. Talk with the slang, slang curses, okay, the the slur, Ebonics, cursing. You know, they yeah. talk proper okay. English. You know, okay. like you know, because they they've been, I, I would say sheltered. You know, they they've been they've been giving a different lifestyle than to what we had. Mm-hmm. So now the kids see the difference. They're, oh, why you talk like that? Why you talk with a high pitch? Why you talk with this? You know. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to like put anyone's kids down or whatever, but that's not going to take you far in life. Facts. Being, being, uh, trying to act ghetto and have a know, street mentality. Yeah. And- th- that's not going to take you far. Um, it, it'll help you. If, if you incorporate some of that into your life, you, you know, you could use those tools that you learn that only the, the ghetto can teach mm-hmm. you or like tough neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. But Overall, being that way and thinking that way, it's not going to get you far in life. And these kids don't know that. I mean, I, I could tell you firsthand, a lot of my friends that were like that, they're either been, they were arrested, did time, were involved in drugs. Or they passed away. Or yeah. Or, or, or some of them have been killed. Killed, yep. Um, It's not a good thing for them to like think that it's the best thing in the world to act that way. It's absolutely yeah. not. I'll, I'll take, I, I, you know, honestly. I would rather be picked on than be one of them. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Snip I, it. Snip it. Snip it. There you go. He's just steel rope coming bombs. through. Deal, throwing, deal, deal, throwing, deal, throwing, throwing tr- just throwing like we guest dimes today. today. Uncle Ro just throwing <laughs> diamonds today. Uncle Ro in the building. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Yeah, Thank I you so much. I appreciate you guys uh, bringing me on. Like <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. It has been a while. And I'm a little bit more comfortable around the mic now because we have a podcast now. But nice. Oh, can you um, tell us a little bit more about the podcast? It's a podcast for wedding creatives, uh, hosted with me, my, my wife Jen, our our good friends Karis and um, her husband Ben. The four of us just sit back together and just you know talk business and talk uh, just just everyday life things that we go through in our business and. Try to help other creatives as well. That's awesome. Yo, that's right. awesome. Just over here, just dropping knowledge <laughs> of diamonds right now. Yo, but and, and guess who the producer is? You just focusing it. on you? Yeah, you yeah, focusing you tell on us, you? Tell us who's the producer. Us who's right the producer. here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but Uncle Roll, thank you for coming on the no, show thanks again. Thanks for having me Yo, on. We even, take even if too it's a couple you know? of minutes, I'm glad I could oh, uh, this is good. give my insight of what I went through and you know the struggles 
that I went through because of hanging out with the wrong crowd. And, you know, I, I was a super senior. A lot of people don't know that, but I spent a lot of extra, a couple extra years in high school because I hung out with the wrong crowd. Hey, the longer the better, right? Yeah. The, the no. more years in school, the more <laughs> intelligent no, it's you not. are. The, the more educated you come out. <laughs> oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that detail because yeah, I don't think a no lot problem. of people knew that, you know, and I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to share that because, you know, even though that happened to you, look how successful you are now. Like, look how things have changed for you in the better. So taking that and just in stride, I'm like, yo, more power to you, my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, um, my man moved to Staten Island. So, so uh, no. over the bridge and so no, another no, world. It's Part not, of that it's is a woman have, in the background. Yeah, the right the right support system that got your back. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, that. I, I agree with that hundred percent. But also, some of that drive was growing up in you know the the school system, the public school system that was. In place at the time. Yeah. School you know, of hard knocks. The the neighborhood I grew up in, it, it kind of, that was a, a driving factor for me to try to do better. Just do better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Man, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you much, guys. Uncle Roll. We're going to let you be. Ready to go? All right. Look at him. Look at him. Look at the professional. The professional. <laughs> professional. <laughs> favorito. <laughs> favorito. <laughs> but um, a lovely guess that was wasn't that such an awesome guest it was a surprise it guess a no surprise. one expected that. nobody expected that but that was so good you know like i think like just dropping the knowledge and talking about going back to school it's always different to learn from different perspectives and i think that's the reason why we have this conversation yeah but um i really think that i want to take a moment to kind of highlight stefan right now because stefan was in his feelings before and i just want to reach out to him and i want to tell him that we love you and i really think that being in a new school is very challenging, but we as a family, we're here and we're happy for you and we are supporting you. And it's okay for you to feel sad. I get it because me being in a new school, I stick out like a sore thumb. But if you feel a certain way, let us know because we want to make sure that we help you with whatever it is that you have. And Re I don't remember the school doesn't define who you are. Absolutely. You define, Absolutely. you define yourself who you are as a person. Absolutely. So I really, I want to take this time to really say that, you know, we, we love you and it's okay. We're here to help you and, and support each other, especially when it comes to school. Okay. All right. All right, cool. All I right. Too. So I want to talk about a little bit about some uh, story time. So let's go about, let's talk about some story time. Let's share some of the stories that we've had in school in the first couple of weeks our experiences our um <laughs> our experiences in the past who wants to go first who wants to talk about their first story story time story time well i got a few stories you know it all depends on what you want to hear i got the toilet paper incident <laughs> We got uh, asking to do jokes. I got the spitball incident, and we also have a high school incident. Okay, go go for it. Go. What do you think will, will give us the most laughs? The most laughs would be. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll I'll give you three stories. So the first one is. <laughs> you couldn't pick. Good. <laughs> couldn't pick. Okay. So the first one is. This was when I was in, like in second or third grade. Okay. So the teacher asked the, the we had like a whole bunch of downtime towards the end of the day. So the teacher's like, oh, who who wants to who's good at jokes. Who wants to come say a joke? Oh, and I was like, I told my friend, yo, I got, I got a lot of jokes. And he's like, yo, go ahead, go ahead, go up there. So I, I raised my hand. I go up. I said the joke. Nobody laughed. Teacher said, sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend set you up. Yeah, my boy, like he looked he at, he went like this. He went like this. He's like, <laughs> like, not it, bro. <laughs> What is it? Not the vibe? What do they call it? It's yeah, not it wasn't a vibe. It wasn't, wasn't a, vibe, it, a vibe check. It wasn't a vibe check? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, so that, that's that story. Okay. And then the next one was, uh, uh, I think this was like a fourth or fifth grade. One of my friends, he used to do spitballs. He used to go to lunch, have straws, and, and start throwing spitballs at everybody. So he got caught one day. He got caught throwing spitballs. We love you, Stefan. So he got caught throwing spitballs. So the teacher makes him go up front. And 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 tell the class because I didn't even know what was going on until I'm like he's going through doing spitball. I was like why he's why he doing spitball? The teacher's like why are you up here? And he's like with his hands behind his back. He's like oh because uh, I was throwing spitballs. And then everyone's laughing. And then he's like no don't laugh. So timid. Yeah. He's like 
And he's like, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> and like, for what? For doing, throwing spitballs at people. And I'm like, I'm like, I didn't even know he was doing it, you know? But just the fact that humiliation, the teacher put him up front of the school and then just put him on blast. That was, that was hilarious. <laughs> and then I have another a high school incident. This is a little more serious because this kid got in trouble for it. You, you, you ever, in your school, did they ever circulate like most likely to do this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or most likely to succeed, most likely to... But that was in the high school, like, in, in the... the high in, school. In the, high... No, but this was in the book, in right, the yearbook. Right. In the yearbook. The who, they had, like, a list of people. Yeah, of course, of course. Most likely to do this, be a sports celebrity, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. So he made a... Uh, most likely to be pregnant, most likely to be... Oh, so this is a bad list. This is a bad list. Ooh, okay. Most, mm, most I likely don't... to have this amount of kids, blah, blah, boom. So he just... Did it and circulated around the whole school. <gasps> that is terrible. <laughs> That's almost like the equivalent of social media, son. Like putting something on a Facebook yeah. post and like circulating yeah, this it. Way, he printed it out and just put it all over the classrooms. You. So, like, like luckily, I was not on that list. <laughs> but the people that were on it, they were pissed off. I and could... to, the, to the point where the principal had to get involved. And uh, I think he got suspended. He, he didn't get to go to uh, prom because of it. <gasps> he didn't get to go to uh, a graduation. senior trip. Senior trip because of it. A uh, graduation. graduation yep. Damn. Was, was it worth deal. it? Was it worth it? Uh, I get. I don't know. I, I don't I, think I it was worth it. He must have thought it was worth it at the time. But just the fact that he made a list, you know, likely who who to. Yo, that is crazy. But again, it was like, like raunchy and and dirty <sighs> and like, and people were like so upset. Yo, that's crazy. Who else wants to share a story? I have a story. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the story started on the second day of school. Uh, I have like a little side story. First day of school, some girl was getting mad at another girl and she threw a box of pencils at her. Oh, Jesus. That's wrong off the floor. First day of school. Absolutely ridiculous. Why are you doing this? But like, you know. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, second day of school. Um, no, wait. Second day of school. Um, there's this kid that yelled at the science teacher. I'm gonna call him Frank. Let's go with Frank. Let's okay, with Frank. Frank. Science teacher wanted to move Frank to another table because he was talking. He and then he started cursing, saying all these mean things to the teacher. He was just carrying on. Yeah, he was just like yelling, cursing, <sighs> screaming. Oh no! And kept doing rude gestures at her and. She was trying not to break down in front of the class and it was really embarrassing. I felt bad for her because she didn't deserve that. She was a nice, sweet teacher. And eventually she didn't come back to the school and she quit. Oh, no. And I won't even know about this today. Wow. Wow. Shit. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yo, that's crazy. No. So- and, then, and, then, and then guess what? Another teacher came yesterday and she was a little older. And then she has the audacity to say, I'm a New Yorker. I'm from the hood. She was old. I don't think she knows who she's talking about. Uh, she might. She might have an understanding of what it is. And then she literally quit she the She replaced day. it. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. I swear to God, she has never came back after that. Wow. Y'all cannot handle these. Te- and, then this, and then the nice teacher that we have, she doesn't even know science that well. She's trying to learn science with us. <laughs> Oh my god. She's originally a math teacher and she's like, okay guys, we're gonna learn this together. I'm like, right. What is happening? What and is happening right now? Next. Um, I think it was Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. Last week, Tuesday, we had a fight. Mm-mm. Um literally a fight. When happened. you say we, who? You? Or what? there was a fight. There not was we. a fight. The f- fight, not a fight. A it was a fight. Um last week, Tuesday. Um, the fight happened. Inside of a classroom, it was still the science room. Look, okay, we got two people. We got Frank, and we're going to call the other one JJ. <laughs> okay. Frank and JJ were having a debacle, blah, blah, blah. They were arguing, but blah, blah, blah. Um, Frank had to be escorted outside the room, and JJ was still, no, Frank was still talking, and then JJ went outside, and they were arguing outside, and then um, it all went down from there. Um, they started <laughs> fighting, there. throwing punches. Ooh. Throwing punches, blood, like, all over his nose, uh, JJ's nose. Oh, my God. And then the funniest part was that as soon as they ran outside and the doors closed, 
everybody got up from their seats and booked it to the door and wanted to see what was happening. Oh my God, a bunch of nosy kids. Yes, this is terrible. And they were all like, oh, oh my God. Yo. You, you saw that too? Did you oh. see that? Yeah. So, but this is your first encounter. That was your first encounter. So I get beat down, getting beat up in school. Yeah. Is he back in school yet? He's back Frank, in school. Frank is, but Frank. what about JJ? What about JJ? I haven't seen JJ ever since. Oh my goodness. It's <laughs> just really. Odd. He must have. He must have been ex- suspended for a really long time, or even expelled. So okay. okay. So here's how we're gonna address that. This is how we're gonna address that really quickly. What could have been done to prevent this? We don't know. We don't know the full picture. We don't know the full story. Mm -hmm. But what happens is now we have to take into consideration what would be the cause for this fight? How do you prevent it in the first place? Communication. Communication is key, right? Anger issues, mental disability, uh, mental, um, your mental state. Like we have to really focus on like what made this child so angry? What caused this fight to happen in the first place? And, you know, we laugh at it. We laugh at it because this is something that it was like nothing new for us, like when right. we were growing up. But for for us to experience it as parents and having our own kids witness, witness other fights, we're like, oh, my God, it's like history repeating itself again. So taking this to a more serious note. What do we have to do in order for this to prevent? We There's nothing really we personally can do. We only can try to, you know, mind our business and focus on what we need to do. And that is our studies. And that's definitely what it is. Does anybody else have a story, story to share? Stephanie, you have a story to share? Um, I'm going to put it up and yarn it out. How did they do that? They just found it on the floor. That was it? Is it, is it, is it opened? <laughs> it just opened? Damn. Oh my God. Anything else interesting happen? No. No? Okay. All right. Uh, what? Well, okay. Well, my story I want to share is something like stupid things that kids do on the regular. So I started with throwing toilet paper in the ceiling in the bathroom. So did I. So the whole point of that is like, is to catch people when they're in this toilet sitting down so that the toilet paper could hit them on their head while they're sitting on the toilet. Like a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened a few times to the teacher. Well, Whenever we did it with my friends, we did it and nobody knew. So we didn't get in trouble. <laughs> so that's, that's something um, about that. But other stories that I've had, again, that I, we talked about with Uncle Ro is, um, you know, seeing kids um, being chased down while in the, right after school. And that was probably like one of the scariest experiences for me because I was in eighth grade when I saw this. So that kid, unfortunately, he got hurt really, really bad. And um, it was on the news about the whole incident. Um, it was about 20 kids that was chasing one kid in particular. I don't know how this, how this whole situation started, but it, I mean, it was a very scary situation because my friend and I, we were walking home and all of a sudden her and I, we hear this whole commotion. So we see one kid just running past us. And then we turn around, we see a mob of kids with their book bags running up and down. And we thought that they were coming after us. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So we moved to the side because we didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then we proceeded and we were like, we were scared. We were so, so scared after seeing that. Like, I didn't really know how, what to think. And I like my friend and I, we ran home. Like we, we were like 10 minutes from home. I'm, I must've made it home in two minutes. Like I literally ran home because I didn't know what was, you know, the gist of that. So that to me is like very, very scary when, you know, thinking about after school, you know, not all stories are fun. Not all stories are, um, you know, serious all the time, but this is the, the, the path of what we do in terms of school. Like this is what education is. This is what is all part of education, the social aspect, the physical aspect, the mental, Mental, emotional, emotional. all of it is all encompassed. So when people change schools or where people are having difficulty adjusting and things like that, this is when the time you have to come in and step in and and really reach out to those resources. But um, in closing thoughts, does anybody have any closing thoughts, you know, telling us like, what did you learn from this episode? Was there anything you'd like to add? Anything how you want to close out? We got it good. No, yeah, we guys got it good. And uh, my closing thoughts, (laughs) 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 you guys got it good. My closing thoughts is, um, you define how you want your education to be. You define yourself when you're in school. You define yourself as a person. You define yourself. Who, who, you kind of find yourself who you are. You find yourself. Ex- I like you know, that. Emotionally, yeah, I like that. physically, and how you want to present yourself to the world. You absolutely, know? absolutely. What and about- it's all it's all about how you take education too. You know, you can either, you know, the teachers are there to help. It's either you want to learn or you don't. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. You don't learn, then we, we you can't. know the outcome of your life, how it's going to be later. And we can't force you to do that yeah. either. You know, we could, we could push you <laughs> to, to a point. But again, I guess the purpose for us and our goal is to make sure that you get the best um, education and the best, um, you know, advice and the resources that we can give and, and provide to you. That's really our goal. But we want you to kind of highlight and be like, look, it wasn't as bad as this or things could have been worse. And just looking at the whole perspective of how school has changed from the time when we went to school to you guys now, I think it has gotten a little bit better, but there's still some things that are reminiscent when we were growing up, still seeing the fights, still seeing these yep. things. So nothing much has changed, but a lot has changed. Yeah. I guess that's my, my closing. So I guess the whole philosophy and education, the, the whole educational infrastructure, I guess the way how they teach things now is different, you know? Right. You're not, you're not just, um, I don't want to. I don't want you to be a number. I want you to be seen as a person. Right. And the person is more than just a statistic. You're more than just a statistic. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Adrian, do you have any closing thoughts? Anything you want to add? Anything you want to put out there and say? You know, how's your experience with school? How was it so far? I would just say, just get through it. You know, <laughs> just get like, through like, it. To be real, like if you just try to just be friends with the right people. And ignore everything else. You'll just get through it just as fine. You know? You have to find the right people that you would consider family as soon as you guys would bond or connect. Because mm -hmm. I've known my, my, other, my close friend since like first grade, kindergarten. And we've like been so close. It's like kind of like family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you just find the right people and just talk to the right people, you can... It feels like you can literally do anything. Right. 100%. But just get through the school year. Don't BS. It's not. <laughs> Don't not, BS. It's not, it's not worth it, right? It's not worth it. It's, it's not, not worth it. it. I want to talk a little bit more about new segments we're going to be talking about. So we want you guys to keep looking out for live sessions with Dre, with myself and Andres over here. We're going to be talking about new story topics, things like that, and everything else in between. Um, don't forget to keep looking out for school commute. We're going to be changing it up a little bit, see how we're going to work it out because now that the kids are not commuting yeah, in the we're morning, not school, we're not driving to school, to so school. we're walking to school. So we're going to see how we can incorporate that and make things more interesting along the way. And we also want to talk about a new segment. It's going to be talking about I work in pediatrics. So it's going to be me talking about medical cases, talking about my day in life and working in pediatrics. So that's going to be super, super, fun so Stefan, can you take us out please typical for a family conversation podcast talks about all things family listen to past episodes about parenting health culture stories and much more you can listen in front of us on all major podcast platforms as well as watch us on youtube whenever you feel like listening to podcasts visit our website www.tableforepodcast.com that is www.table i forgot the, the dot again do the whole thing for the beginning oh me. you can listen and find us you can listen and find us on all major podcast platforms as well as watch us on YouTube whenever you listen to your podcast. Visit our website, www.tableforpodcast.com. This is Stephanie. This is Andre. This is Adrian. And this is your boy, Stefan. And there it's is nothing, nothing more, more important than family. family. And, and we, we are, are here, here to remind, remind you of that. that. And this is Table, Table Before, a family, family conversation, conversation podcast. podcast. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. 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 bye.